Welcome to Playful Podcast, your guide into the underground scene where we discover topics on kink and electronic music every week. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on our next episode. We are here today with latex fetishist Bloodshrimp. In our conversation, we talk about how the fetish started, the fetish community, kink clubs and latex play, and much more. I am Amanda, and this is Playful Podcast. So we've been, uh, I've been knowing you for some time. And if we, sometimes people say like, oh, it in the podcast, it feels like you already know the scene and you're not including so much. So I'm going to back my, back away the yeah, real. Let's bring real some context. Co- exactly. Put some mm-hmm. context. Um, you were a competitive swimmer, like from early on. Yeah. And that's how how well that's there's some connection between you collected competitive swimwear Mm -hmm. and you still do today you know yeah yeah i mean the same way that i buy a lot of used rubber online because it's cheaper this way um i also collect a lot of uh swimwear so basically this water fetish thing started before the latex fetish so one preceded the other (laughs) let's start with that um Basically, like I was a competitive swimmer for many years, and I really liked the feeling of of wearing these like old school competitive swimwear. So uh, now uh, it's a little bit different because since two thousand eight, Fina changed uh, the rules, and people can only wear uh, like very short outfits. But um, uh, before two thousand eight, when I was mostly swimming, uh, people would wear these like sometimes full suit lycra and spandex suits. Oh, really? Like like they would cover their whole body, and it looked amazing yeah <laughs> um and uh, yeah and it took you about like 20 minutes to put them on you had to put on a plastic bag it was a whole thing it it constricted your breathing a lot they looked incredible and they made you feel very fast what about the plastic bag yeah i mean so with latex suits you use uh, silicone oil normally or yeah. talcum powder but silicon oil is better um and before like you can't use neither of these things so you you would usually just put like a plastic bag on your foot and then you would just, I don't know, do a bunch of uh, like like prayers and then hope that it will work. And then you would just put your, your, your foot like through the suit and then put it on. It would, yeah, the whole thing would take around like 20, 30 minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then you uh, got, you f- somehow found latex. latex. Yeah. So, yeah, I was in comparison sw- uh, swimming and that was a big fetish of mine. Like this whole, the suits the locker rooms, the smell of chlorine. I was all into that. Um, and then I moved to Berlin. And in 2015, uh, I had a guy that gave me some latex stockings. And I was like, whoa, like it blew my mind. I was like, I put them on. I like the feeling of pressure of it as well. It reminded me a lot of these competitive suit suits. Um, and yeah, and then from then on, I was like, okay. I started like slowly discovering it. Uh, and then I had a relationship with a guy that was very into rubber. And then he was like, oh, you have some rubber too. And then he was like, okay. And then we started doing like really heavy rubber play, like whole cat suits, gas masks, breath play. Latex uppers, and rubber. Color. This is something that I, this is just mm-hmm. a little stick in, but uh, I don't, I don't quite get the difference. Right. Um, there, I mean, latex and rubber are used interchangeably in the community, at least as far as I know. One refers more about the material that is extracted, you know, like because it's a natural organic material that is taken from, from trees. Um, and then the other one is basically the material that you get like after you manufacture it and it goes through certain industrial processes. Um, usually latex is referred to when you when you when when it's like thinner latex, like cat suits or dresses, because there's a lot of like latex fashion out there currently, um, like Kim Kardashian. Oh. Um, and yeah, and rubber is usually uh, regarding like <laughs> sorry, <laughs> like it minks oh, is like, just, and <laughs> I was like, oh, Kim Kardashian, oh, like if I <laughs> if that makes me understand, <laughs> I have I was actually really confused when you mentioned her name within this. I was like, my brain was like, freeze, what's going on? Because she's been really into oh, latex really? lately. I, yeah, maybe with the, her collection or yeah. something. Ah, okay, I didn't yeah, know. Like, like I don't know. It's very. There's a big moment in fashion right now. Everybody's wearing rubber and or latex. Um, like they have dresses or like these outfits or I don't know. I think even Britney Spears w- uh, wore uh, oh, latex uh, okay. at some point, like in in the early two thousands. I can so definitely yeah. see Britney in it. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so yeah, and obviously there's a big moment in fashion regarding latex and BDSM. Like I there always is. It's a cyclical thing, I think. Um, mm. So yeah, so like latex is sometimes more used to describe like f the fashion side of the use of this material, like dresses, accessories, um, and rubber sometimes is more used to describe like uh, heavy rubber, like gas masks, uh, accessories that you use for play, like uh, slings and, and what have you, boots. So yeah, so mm. many use rubber, but they're I I don't know they're rubber. Used this is actually PVC, <laughs> but it looks oh, no. cool. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. Uh, but yeah, so that's it. Okay, and yeah, so you got into both then. And how was the first introduction? Like, did you immediately know it turns you on? or? Um, I'm going to be honest, it was intimidating at first. Mm -hmm. uh, f going from uh, accessories to a full cat suit, and I was like... I really like the feel of it. It you know it reminds me of this uh, you know the swimming thing. Uh, I got to use it while uh, being in a bathtub together with water to see how the pressure of water would uh, would work with it. And then going from that to play to like you know slings, ha uh, gas masks, tubes like that looks really bizarre. Uh, I think it took me around like a year to get up to that point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and there were times where I was like. Am I into this? But yeah, as soon as you get past the whole, this is very bizarre and weird, you actually can enjoy yourself. Yeah. So then you could relax more in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I always thought like, is this me? Is this not me? Am I into this? Because it also happens so fast. Um, but yeah, and then I started like getting more comfortable with it. And I, it started, you know, if you draw parallels to your own experience, like I did with swimming, you know, then it starts becoming something more that belongs to you. Mm -hmm. And I think that makes you comfortable with something that might seem so foreign at first. And when you're in full dress, when I, now I dive in a little bit head first, we're going to go get back to this more. Mm -hmm. This is just like me thinking since you are also a person who's in uh to kink parties and sex parties and we'll find you there <laughs> and then i'm thinking just like there's so many various latex suits right but i was thinking like penetration it's not possible in it right yes it is um so I mean, if you want to get specific, there's so depending on the suits that you're wearing, most of them will have zippers on your crotch area, uh, like this one. Oh, I didn't uh, think because yeah. obviously latex manufacturers be like, hey, you know, people might get horny if they're wearing these, so might, they might need to do something about it. So most of them will have zippers. There's also called something like the condom suit, where uh, where suits will have kind of like a little entry with a, a like a little um, area like that's like resembles a condom. So actually, you can have penetrative sex with already a condom included in the suit. Very Did you just like clean space. a little bit and then? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, obviously, you have to clean it thoroughly, and it's like, uh, but always the cleaning of latex is always like sometimes a bit of a of a headache, uh, or it's nice depending if you look at it. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of ways that you can go about it, and oh, wow. it's always possible to play. There's always alternatives. There's always ways to to go about what you want. And when you kind of wore the latex suit. In water, was that first when you realized this may turn you on? Uh, yeah, you know, it's this was a. I think a lot of people can relate to this. Um, sometimes when you add stuff that you enjoy, not particularly in a sexual way, like you know, I really like food, you know, but yeah. I don't really think about joining food and sex immediately. But when you do, and you're like, huh, well, maybe th I'm into this. I mean, these are obviously two things I like separately. Why, why don't I try them on together? Um, and yeah, water was definitely one of those things. So when I was in water and I, it, it's a very sensorial thing, mm -hmm. feeling the pressure, feeling this constrictive um, feel with the latex and the water together, the water getting into the latex. It's, yeah, it, it's extremely hard to describe, but yeah, it, it becomes a very inner personal thing. And then you can always add someone else there. If it's someone that you trust, someone that you are into, and someone that can understand and share the things with you that you can communicate freely with, mm -hmm. then why not enjoy it? Yeah, that can yeah. be a thing to enjoy. Do you also have the mask where you where the mouth is covered? Uh, sure. <laughs> I, because I was just thinking, because this is uh, all about claustrophobic feelings for some claustrophilia so that's the opposite of claustrophobia right so claustrophobia uh -huh. is like fear of like tight spaces yeah. or, or and claustrophilia is like liking the, the 
these things. So you are more so liking the feeling of it. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Very much so. And and you yeah. Also, you were swimming underwater <laughs> a lot. You know how to hold your breath. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was something you could then also connect with it. Uh, yeah, exactly. So th- there's a l- yeah, exactly. You, you touched a very, very funny point there. So uh, together with this uh, water fetish, the the breath play comes into mind a lot because this thing of like holding your breath, being underwater, not being able to breathe, uh, having this kind of like uh, stressful feeling of like not being able, not knowing when you'll be able to breathe. So yeah, that's that's a point where water and latex can intersect because you can have gags that will you know, impede your breathing or make it more difficult. You wear gas masks that that make the breathing more labored, you know, if you have to breathe through tubes. Um, So there's a lot of setups you can do to kind of mimic the same thing that you have underwater without having to actually be underwater. So, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it feels like your introduction was therefore so smooth in a way, like it was natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aye, very interesting. Um. How would you say the procedure built up if we dive a little bit into that more? You were finding the erotic feelings of it. Mm-hmm. And then did you try it with a partner to partners or did you find your community and dive into like the play spaces? And um, So when I started doing it, it w- I was in a relationship with a guy that was into it. And we didn't really have a community around us. It was kind of this thing that we shared. And he was very adamant about it. He didn't want to share it really with anybody. Uh, He was a very private person and didn't really like, I don't know, I don't think he really wanted the sense of community in that sense. Um, But yeah, when we broke up and I started doing my own thing, I found great solace in community and also learning about it, you know, because... I have my own journey and it was very specific. And then if you go into a group of people that are into the same thing with you as you do, um, but come from completely different backgrounds, they will always teach you something. You will always get to know something that you had not expected. People that have their own gear configurations, their own uh, equipment, that have their own stories. There's people that knew that they were into rubber since they were five. (laughs) Like, right? Yeah. Yeah, So that, that they remember, for example, uh, uh, their moms having these uh, rubber like rubber gloves from oh. East Germany uh, that they to use make the dishwasher. Yeah, yeah, to like to to wa- to wash dishes or to like work on the car or like electrical equipment. And then they had this kind of like feeling about biting on it, and that's how this this uh, fetish came about. It's crazy, right? Like yeah, their own little thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I met someone else recently that told me that they also start quite young at like six, seven, and it was because also in East Germany. I don't know if there's a, like, a big conference here, um, where they had these like rubber mats that you would put children on so they wouldn't get hurt. Oh. Uh, and and because of this, there was kind of this like protection layer that they would feel very comfortable on top of this mat because it was supposed to keep them safe. And because of that, they have this like really nice connection with rubber that is like, oh, it's protecting me in a sense. So then it became they beca- became a pervert because of that. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah. There's definitely different sides of it. Like, mm-hmm. not everyone feels it's like putting a plastic bag over your head. Like right. This it kind usually of. starts small, yeah. I think. Um, maybe it doesn't. It, it might not be that for every people, for everybody. But um, yeah, I think it usually goes in increments. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, so I was doing this uh, project. So for me, you know, there's this very he- heavy fetishist thing. But to me, rubber has become also kind of a, like um, an artistic uh, uh, outing. No? So, mm-hmm. so I, I started uh, using latex as also kind of a, li- a little bit of a creative outlet, in a sense. So I had this project in Spain in May, uh, where we were shooting in this really nice complex uh, by Ricardo Bofil. So he's a very mm-hmm. famous uh, architect that died uh, earlier, I think this year or last year. Uh, and he had this amazing uh, building called La Muralla Roja in Calpa, in uh, close to Alicante in Spain. So we did a project there, and uh, that is not out yet. Uh, so it was me and a videographer, and I had these like crazy outfits on. And basically, this is a, a closed complex uh, where people actually live. Uh, and there were, and most people rent Airbnbs like in everywhere. But there's people living there too. So uh, we were shooting there, and I had this kind of like very tight. A uh, silver suit with uh, breast implants. It's so, like I looked like a superhero. Like I looked 
like very out there. And we had this kid. That, so we had this uh, girl, like she must have been like eight or nine, that was kind of like following us everywhere because she was very impressed by what the, what we were doing. And I was just looking at her and I was like, I think she's going to be telling this to her psychologist in like 30 years. Like, this is how my fetish happened. <laughs> like, it's it, it was such a bizarre situation. And like, obviously she did not make any association of it. Like, it obviously it's not something perverted, but because I looked like a superhero because uh, I had these like high boots on. But I was like, Mm -hmm. this is how it starts it's always something innocuous and then a couple of years later you're like ah yep this is where it was <laughs> wow yeah i can imagine so many like associations also that you're not aware of that later is like oh this and then people who make the associations like this makes me feel safe and then like clicks it clicks exactly. them it's familiar it's yeah. something that i can relate to it's something that i have a connection to mm. and then it it can build up from there of course how did you find your community when you were new in the scene? So, um, my ex and I started this Instagram uh, basically during lockdown, kind of a little bit of as a hobby, where we would post pictures that he would take of me and then we would upload them. Uh, when we broke up, I continued it solo. And it became kind of this collaborative thing where I would like seek out photographers and other fetishes that we would shoot together. And that's this is kind of how the community started for me. So I'm very active on Instagram, uh, on Twitter as well, on FetLife. So all of these you know, uh, platforms where you can connect with the people that have the same interests as you. And yeah, yeah, and it kind of became a little bit like that because during Corona, there weren't any events that normally there would be for you to meet people like this, right? So every, everything had to be done online. Uh, yeah, and everybody kind of just takes pictures of themselves or shares things, or you can, you know, you have these forms or you can just talk to people. And then, yeah, and that's how you kind of get a, a grasp of how intersectional all of this is. So it intersects gender, it intersects uh, social economic status, it intersects countries, cultures. There's people, you know, prefer about something everywhere. and. I find it really fascinating how the internet kind of was able to glue everybody together in that sense. And for me, it has been crucial, really. Uh, even when I was going through a tough time, um, or I was trying to find my footing, or like trying to find sp about specific information about Lightix itself, there was always somebody there that was more than willing to share that information, which was amazing. Do you think that also the community has taught you something about yourself in some ways? Uh... Yeah, of course. The, the thing is that who I am in latex and out of latex uh, can defer, <laughs> which is really funny. Mm. Um, you know, if you when you objectify yourself in in a sense, and and you put it on latex to the point that you cannot recognize yourself or recognize yourself in the mirror, uh, to me, it it came about that this shadow or alter ego came out. You know, for example, my non-latex self can be very socially anx anxious and very shy and very introverted. But I feel like when I put on latex, it, I don't need to be any of that. You know, I'm not myself, so I can be whoever I want to be. Uh, and this comes out also when I meet people. So I've only uh, there's people that I've met o uh, when I've only been in latex, for example, uh, at events or at parties, wherever. Um, and they're perception of me or their projection of me or how they think I am like you know I can see that and learn from that a little bit so I all constantly learn from myself in latex as well mm. I honestly I recommend anybody to try this out because it's a it's an incredible self learning experience <laughs> really um, yeah I when I think when you objectify yourself and you can give yourself an opportunity to just be wherever the fuck you want to be uh, and do the things that normally you wouldn't do. It's an extremely freeing experience. It's undescribable. Um, yeah, and it's it it's added on to my uh, life quality so much, really. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, it's been a trip. And now you have some of your like. Do you also did you also meet some friends who you are having like beside together with the person you're underneath? blood shrimp or underneath the latex uh, if i've met people uh while in latex that would also like, exactly except for us <laughs> 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 no but i mean like through the community more so uh yeah of course i mean 
uh, sometimes I would meet up with people before shoots. You know, if I was meeting people for shoots or to make contact uh, content, we would meet well while, while we're both you know in normal clothes, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so I always like to talk a little bit or talk a little bit on the phone or talk a little bit in person for a coffee and be like, hey, you know, and like get to know a little bit each other. And that always is in neutral ground, like no latex, just you very naked and very like civilian and very mm. you, you not very productive. brave for being a shy person. <laughs> yes. <though. laughs> uh, yeah, but that's I think that's where this whole um, uh, how do you call it? This kind of like catharsis feeling comes from, right? Because it, you're putting yourself out there, you're vulnerable, but you think like, yeah, this this protection of latex has put me up to this point that I can feel confident enough to go forward without latex. Mm. Uh, yeah, it, it's. I mean, this is still very. This is quite recent to me. I started this uh, during lockdown, like really getting to the community and doing content and and traveling and meeting folk. Uh, so this is kind of like two years old. Oh, so okay. It's still in its very genesis, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I I cannot complain. It's no. it's been a wild ride so far. How many years are we on to now? So I started l enjoying latex in 2015. So oh yeah. now it's seven. Seven. Yeah, seven years. Oh yeah, seven years. And the water fetish has been there. I don't know since I was like <sighs> two. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's been really since good. you were two. Since I went two. So was it before you learned swimming? Yeah, well, I mean, was it or did it happen in water or? So my mm -hmm. mom <laughs> told me uh, I'm out to my parents, by the way, about this whole latex thing. Um, so my mom told me that I was uh, really obsessed with water and, and bathing. Like I did not want to get out of the of the uh, of the bathtub. Like, and she would just leave me there for hours because I did not want to leave. And she's like, okay. Then if you do that, then I'll do something else. Uh, so they put me on to swimming lessons quite early on when I was two years old. So it, I was two when I started swimming, and before that, I w I just was really into bathing. <laughs> and today, you you talked about the shootings a little bit. Like you do many shoots nowadays. What's uh, like? Do you have any? Because you, you see those shoes and it looks so clean and so, you know, organized and, well, of course, it is very professional in so many ways. But I mean, is there any, <laughs> this is what I want to hear more about. Is there any crazy things that ha happens during the shoot or? Um, okay, so most of these are not professional. Most of these oh, have really? like maybe. They just look professional. Yeah, they, they, okay. I mean, I'm glad they came across that way because mo like a lot of times like we're either sweating profusely or I had a shooting here in Berlin, one of the first shoots that I did. Um, <laughs> and so this was dead of winter. We were shooting um, this heavy rubber thing and I was doing it together with another guy that was shooting with, with me. And right before we stepped on camera, like I was putting on my cats and I had boots on, I had a corset, gloves, uh, a harness, what have you. And right before I stepped onto the camera, uh, like my cat suit rips, like no. right on my ass. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, and so basically we had to do the whole shoot with me kind of like <laughs> angling it out <laughs> in a sense. So it was super awkward. And like both the photographer and my uh, co-star, like they were both feel super bad for me. And I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> because unfortunately latex is still very expensive. So at, at that point I did not have more than one suit that I would bring with me. You now cannot... I do. Oh, okay. But you cannot fix it when it's latex. Uh, well, I cannot because I'm not very good at it. But there's mostly, actually, a lot of latex fetishes that I know can also work latex and they can make their own stuff. I cannot. I have to buy my my whole stuff because I am not talented. <laughs> um, well, you're talented in much, though. Yeah, and I you can pose. <laughs> I can do other things. Like making ma uh, latex is not one of my You're also stuff. a computer maniac. Oh uh, yeah, I'm a nerd. You you're exactly. You know na like uh, I was going to say nature, but that's like the the more so nature computer focused mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean I like you know my vanilla job is very tech uh, uh, like focused. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm into engineering. I'm currently like working a lot in programming. So that's like my parallel life <laughs> to all of this. Um yeah, so most of the time, although they look quite pulled, to, you know, pulled together and very professional, a lot of the times it's just me and another person behind the camera and me in front of the camera, and us going to a place where I have to like change into a cat suit in a parking lot, <laughs> and when, or we have someone tell us like we cannot, you cannot do this here. I don't know what you're doing, but you like you have to fuck off. So there's a lot of this that people do not get to see. 
uh, which is kind of part of the of the whole experience. But I mean, like sometimes, especially in this city, you can when you're out clubbing a lot, it can feel like everyone is so easy going with everything that is around kink and such. But of course, you do a lot of shoots that are very public as well. Are there ever like are you provoking feelings? Are there ever like? Um, I for example, when I whenever I shoot in the streets of Berlin, I never had the feeling that oh we have to be careful about who we might upset because it's a city that you don't really get this feeling. In Berlin, it feels like you can paint yourself gold and be naked and do the headstand down the street, and people will be like, yeah, okay, you know, it it's, it feels like very natural in the city. But um, I did a shoot in Lisbon, and like in downtown Lisbon. Uh, and this was one of my first shoots as well. And I was petrified because I'm like, okay, there's Berlin and then there's like Portugal, which is a 99% Catholic country. Uh, and I was like, ah, yeah, I was a bit curious about how people might <laughs> feel about me going uh, down the street in full gear. Um, but most people kind of just uh, were intrigued by it or they saw it, saw it as some kind of performance art. Uh, I oh. did have one old lady come to me and I was like, oh, here we go. Uh, and she just came to me and she's like excuse me i just wanted to say that you look a lot like catwoman and i'm like <laughs> thank you you fucking old lady that's amazing <laughs> like thank you so much okay like it's been 100 percent positive like if people find it weird or like even upsetting they will not come to me they'll be like oh, okay they will just step away but people most of the time will just be like i don't understand what this is or they do when they're like hmm? or they do when they're like nice <laughs> so and if they do come to me it's usually to compliment me on my outfit yeah and i understand should. i don't blame them we were speaking a little bit about that it's two personas uh behind the person behind blood shrimp and the latex blood the blood shrimp whatever uh but would how would you say like the two person or like what does blood shrimp get to do that the pers- other person doesn't get to do hmm. okay so Beside the shoots. <laughs> so, like, Blood Shrimp, I think, is way more extroverted. Uh, you know, it, it's v- very m- it's, uh, it's very more, much more hedonistic and definitely way more gender playful. Like, my vanilla self, like, I feel like I have to perform a lot because of the job that I do and the people that I hang out with. Not because they're intolerant or anything. It's just I'm not comfortable in being extremely queer around people uh, in my vanilla life. Uh, but blood shrimp is like it's beyond all of that, you know. Uh, you know, my vanilla self lives in the the very center of society, while blood shrimp lives very comfortably on the fringe, and that's okay. You know, I don't mind being, uh, you know, uh, being very queer or very outspoken about my fetishes or being very outspoken about what I feel politically, because again, there's this anonymity that that I can hide behind. You know, my vanilla self still f- speaks through blood, blood shrimp. It's kind of a, a little bit like a mouthpiece, uh, but I can hide behind anonymity. And also, you know, I'm already—I'm obviously a, prefer- a pervert. So, you know, why pretend about something some something else? <laughs> Are uh, you very much uh, the flirt type at parties? It depends on how I feel that night. Like sometimes I'm very, I, I can be flirty and I can be very playful. Most of the time, especially if the music is good, I just want to dance to music and I don't want anybody to touch me. <laughs> other times I'm like, I don't mind like hanging out with people or other things. You must drink a lot of water. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't, it's not very often that I party like in full blown latex. Sometimes I just have a hood or the, like a body or something, like something a little bit more comfortable. But I have partied in a full cat suit and it's a, it's a life choice. <laughs> it's a life choice. <laughs> it's a it's a commitment. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of sweating, but hey, if you are in parties that are already like kink focused, usually that makes it more comfortable because usually the you know the infrastructure is already prepared that people are going to be sweating or there's other fluids flying around. Oh yeah. Um, uh, so. It, it, it's still okay. And th- yeah, you just have to do a little bit of your research. And depending on the party, you can feel more or less comfortable about it. What's the most liberating feeling you have when being covered head to toe in latex? Yeah, this um, living out your shadow self fantasy, I suppose. Uh, this, you, you know, everything that inside of you that you thought of like, oh, is this acceptable or is this okay or is this fine to bring up or is this fine to experiment on? 
if you put on something and you feel, you know, you don't really feel like yourself or you feel that you don't recognize yourself and immediately that emboldens you to to try something. At least uh, that's the case for me. And I don't see why that would be different for someone else. Uh, and honestly, I think, you know, and my vanilla and my latex life are not completely separated, right? So my, my vanilla self learns a lot from my latex self like very often like the way that i you know encounter certain problems or like how i face certain things or how i express myself i i bring that to my vanilla life sometimes as well yeah good so yeah we're like good but i mean <laughs> that sounds liberating also for the for because i think sometimes also like sex and uh, uh i was gonna say work life but i mean like the the life you live beyond your sex life can be very connected like if you some people say like oh if you're dominant in real life you're sub in the in the sex life but also like being comfortable with your preferences or being comfortable with um you know learning learning to to live out your fantasies and feeling like i deserve to live this out or like i I'm curious to find this out and ju- then just doing it that obviously teaches you some valuable lessons just what you're Of course, yeah, not just about. about sex but about everything. Exactly. So then you can be like taking for example when you are hired as in a position at work, maybe in a very male dominated field just like you are, mm-hmm. it can be easier. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes. Yes. <laughs> the the it can be easier for you to be like hey hey hey. You know? Yeah, I mean, I wish I could channel this I don't give a fuck energy more. I think I still have to learn that. No, but you're learning per and per, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's a learning process, I suppose. It's a very gradual thing. Um, But yeah, definitely this this kind of assertiveness or this self-confidence be like, hey, you know, I'm in, like, in my sexual life, especially in my uh, kink sex life, I'm so adamant about my boundaries and, like, this I will do, this I will not do, I will not compromise on it, you know, it's not up for discussion. I really wish that I was more like this in my in my vanilla life as well. That I'm like, I won't do that. This is okay, you know. I'm not like this 100 percent of the time because I'm also a very sensitive and shy person. And then if you yell at me, I will cry. <laughs> but uh, I feel yeah. Sometimes you can channel that a little bit and be like, you know what? In, it's fine to to put down things and be confident about the things that you're agreeing to do or not to do. Uh, and it's perfectly fine to be very open and very adamant about these things too. Going back to the sex club part, like when yeah, was you guys are <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear the juices? No, but when was like the first time you went to a sex club? I guess you were in 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 late full ladies the first time, yes. but who knows? Yeah, okay. Um, so this was Kit Kat New Year's Eve two thousand nineteen to twenty twenty, uh, right before the big one hit. Um, so I was yeah I was there with my ex. We spent New Year's Eve there. Uh, it was amazing. Like I was basically wearing the um, some waders like Vajtifa. I was um, gloves. I was completely naked and just had a hood on. My ex was basically doing the same thing. Yeah, and we na- we had a lovely Kit Kat party. Like everybody was like playing around. I remember being sandwiched at s- at some point, like by my by my ex and another a bull. I don't know if you're familiar with this terminology. A bull is just like a hot big guy that would just kind of like come into any a bull formation. or a beer. It's like the same a little bit, or is it? I don't know. Okay, what is your definition of a beer then? A beer is <laughs> 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 well, a beer is the beastie hairy hairy guys exactly that are very much like yeah, having their own corners yeah and exactly very yeah. mask uh, mm. but i don't know if they're more like like yeah so i know that bulls are usually are more like play oriented so bulls all oh, right like, Sounds... are, are like very masculine but very dominant and they can come in like sometimes in kind of an, an heterosexual uh context and be like i'm going to be the third guy that is just going to mask it all up i don't know i might say something up but like in that no. night the bull was that all right <laughs> yeah nice um, okay yeah i was like yeah, yeah that was nice, nice. <laughs> like if i'm like any bulls out there <laughs> want to come my way <laughs> i'm just kidding um all right and then like was the first sex party you ever went to was that uh, a place where you felt comfortable to play at right away how did you feel what what do you feel at sex parties um 
Actually, the first sex party I went to, I was 18. I was not kinky oh at all. Oh my god, I was so young. Yeah, I know. I was a baby. <laughs> and I went with this guy. Uh, he was kind of dominant, but he I guess he didn't know exactly what... I hope he doesn't watch this. He probably doesn't. Um, but So we went to this party called Alter Ego here in Berlin. I don't know if they still happen. I think they do. So their whole the whole premise is... So Alter Ego is a floating party. Everybody wears masks because, you know... Uh, uh, you're not supposed to be recognized, uh, and the and the dress code is something like evening wear, fetish, completely naked, what have you. So of course, me being an eighteen year old, I came there with like high heels and a dress. <laughs> God, God bless me at that time. <laughs> you uh, came there alone? Uh, no, so I was with this date of this guy, um, and I remember it was basically just like a normal club, except that. Um, People were uh, giving each other oral sex right there on the dance floor without having to go to the bathroom. That was a big difference. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is a sex party in Berlin. And it was only when I started going to other parties, like queer parties, when I started getting into latex, like going to Kit Kat, going to a lab, or going to Bergein, or like, you know, or like f more queer oriented, like floating parties, that I started seeing like the alternative of all of this. You know, instead of it, it wasn't so much performative, like people were there really like played there. So like the whole concept of dark rooms was new to me uh, before I started doing this. I did not know what a dark room was. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it was very naive. Um, but, um, but also you were 18. It's OK. Yeah, admittedly. But <laughs> yeah, I was 18 in Berlin. So eventually you learn this, True. I suppose. Okay. Um, but but you yeah, had, I, how long had you lived there then? So um, I've been in Germany since 2012 end of 2012 um but i've been living between uh hamburg and berlin so i live in hamburg but i come very often to berlin now yeah yeah so hamburg is now like my my nest but you were living in berlin already at 18 and then you had lived yeah. here for yeah for a year for a year okay yeah. so yeah you learn that's true yeah mm -hmm. you learn a bunch of stuff right there <laughs> <laughs> like i told my parents that i was like yeah i came to germany i'm learning german like you learn no german in berlin like oh I my didn't. god thank <laughs> you for saying that <laughs> it's okay dear Amanda. family and dear friends in sweden <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard and like but well also nobody will speak german to you here no not even in the dog park not even like, in the dog park that's really sad and then if they do i'm like <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> sprechen <laughs> zu English. <laughs> so yeah, well, yeah, it's, don't, it's, don't feel bad. But like, it's very rare, very very rare. I say this fra phrase. Like I think I've said it once, maybe before I said it now there. Yeah, you don't need to learn German in Berlin. I feel well, that's totally fine. It's a very international city, you know. Uh, but sure. as soon as you go to other parts of Germany, it kind of becomes paramount. <laughs> yeah, that you learn it. Uh, I also need a lot for my job. Exactly. But now to go back to the sex clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the sex clubs. <laughs> You've been there for then quite some years and also as a very hardcore fetishist, I would say. Like everyone, I guess, are curious about sex in public. Maybe not everyone. 99.9% .9 are curious about sex in public. And, uh, and you went there went in there as 18 years old, already found your fetish. Mm -hmm. And how has this progress? Because now you are obviously then still going to sex clubs and partying there. Maybe. And <laughs> maybe I don't need them anymore. <laughs> Who told you this? <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, what does, what do they mean to you? To me, it's so. I mean, I'm very music oriented, so obviously having good techno is important to me. Mm. Um, and I personally like parties that have this kind of like queer, industrial, like messy feel to it. So, like, you know, obviously, Bag Eye is cool, Laboratory is cool, Kit Kat, also depending on the music, can be really cool. And obviously, a very nice uh, kink and fetish, uh, you know, venue, fr like very friendly venue. Um, it. it like for me, it's it's a place that I know that I can be unapologetically myself. Uh, a place that I know that, you know, I can come dressed as I am, and the more bizarre it is, probably the more welcome it is. Which is yeah, it, and Berlin is is very is an oasis regarding this. You know, I think Europe is is still quite kink friendly, you know, especially compared to a bunch of other places. But it's not always like this. 
Um, yeah, and there's yeah this this kind of kinks here in Berlin and all these parties going on. Yeah, yeah it it becomes a little bit of an escape from the real world. You know, the world is on fire, uh, <laughs> fascism is rising everywhere. But when you go into a kink club and the music is right and you and you see people that you are comfortable with and you're in a community and you're in an atmosphere that you're like, yeah, this I can relate to this. I feel comfortable here. You can relax and have fun and uh, forget about your problems for a little second. Mm. That's why they are so important also, yeah. besides many other things. What's your biggest turn on in the sex clubs? Um, although I think there's many things. Obviously, when when you're approaching approaching someone or you just meet someone uh, and there's this kind of like glance and saying like... Mm. Um, it, it's all about confidence, you know, and if sometimes if, I, if I'm in latex and people compliment me on my latex, like sometimes people can be turned off by it, which is totally okay. And sometimes people are like, hey, I'm really into this. And you're like, cool, then we're going to get along. Um, I'm also, for some reason, I find it really hot if there's like, you know, either a, a, a man or a woman or a, a, a non-binary person that, you know... Is attractive, but they also have their face completely covered. I don't know why I find that so sexy, but I do. <laughs> I don't really know why. <laughs> Wouldn't you find that sexy? Yeah, it's super sexy. It's what? for sure. It's it's for sure because it's it's also something about faces. We are so brought up into like, I this is just coming randomly, so maybe it's stupid to say, but whatever. Uh, t- we are so brought up with like having. Like perceiving the face, of course the bodies too, but the faces are still the main thing that you focus it's on, very, even as uh, a yeah, kid. It's a very personal thing. It's a very personal thing, exactly. The eyes, the the eyes you may still see, but I mean the the whole structure of it, like they can be scars, they can be whatever. When you're covered in a mask, there's the whole it, mystery. There's thing the about mystery, it. exactly, and anything the person says, it just, I guess, gets a whole different depth mm-hmm. because it you know it doesn't come from the insecurities that may lay on top of being like oh maybe she's or they are watching my pimple or maybe they are yeah, concerned about completely in another like yeah so yeah i guess it's both sided it's from one side it's you seeing a person with a mask and on the other side the person in the mask what you spoke about also so, yeah this confidence is com- being it, comfortable with themselves yeah i 100 percent mm. that i uh, I don't know, like at least in latex, this kind of like drone uh, aesthetic where you're just basically completely clad in latex. You can you can even discern what gender this person is. You know, they're just like a body when their face is completely covered as well. I don't know. I just think that's so sexy. I, I have no idea why that is, but it just is. It's just, I cannot make it's this up. It just is. <laughs> but when starting out with latex, is there anything? Obviously, you need some... Um, um, oil for your skin mm-hmm. to pull it up but are there any safety or or things to think about yeah i mean regarding any sex you know when you're getting together with someone or just doing by yourself there's always kind of security things that you have to keep in mind right like latex itself i mean it's a very nice material it can be very sensitive so you know, you, for example, you cannot use baby oil or other things that might damage it. Silicone itself might damage latex, but silicone oil is what you use to lubricate it. So regarding how the ma- the material uh, reacts, you have to keep that in mind. You have to do your research. It, it doesn't take very long, but it will pay off in the long run. Um, uh, obviously, like washing it out also, you know, very important. Uh, but for example, when you're using... Uh, gas masks you know when you're doing breath play you have to be very careful about like how the person is feeling uh do you have anything that you could you you have by your side in case something happens if you're uh, using poppers obviously because you know it's still a big thing and people obviously use them uh poppers raise your blood pressure and obviously anything that comes with that you have to be you know you have to be able to like to know that if something happens you're able to get this person in a secure uh place or like go to a hospital if something uh unexpected happens for example so but i think this goes out to any sexual uh, venture that you go into if you do breath play underwater if you um 
uh, if you use choking, you know, you have to know that you're doing it correctly. You know, if you're you, if you're ch- using your hands to choke someone, you, you need to know that you're doing the right thing, uh, using the right technique, so that you make sure that you're not crushing someone's windpipe, for example. That could be very tragic. Uh, yeah, and yeah, getting informed, looking online. There's so much material about it. There's a lot of uh, kink educators out there that can give you very safe uh rules that you're like okay you know consent also very good rule of thumb like is this okay is this not okay does this feel good to you this how does this feel to you yeah constant communication especially if it's your first time i think it's absolute paramount now we have come to the part of the podcast where if you're a patreon you'll get to join in for the good stuff where we get under the latex of blood shrimp to hear more about their sex club turn-ons and all that juicy stuff. If you support what we do and want to hear more of the juicy, dirty details, go to patreon.com slash playful magazine and join in. It's either this or it's that. This is this or that. And this is a thing that we call this or that, where we say two different uh, words, I guess, and you say which one you prefer of them, or Let's both, or none, but preferably one of the other. Yep. Uh, that fits onto you. Polygamy or monogamy? Monogamy. Yeah, I guess like that's also something because you are at the play parties, and it may feel like you are this like. Yeah, that I'm very like you know Polyamorous. open, very Berlin, very poly. It's like and that, there's nothing wrong with that. And I have done, I, I I've been poly before, um, but I think at heart, I'm very old fashioned in the sense that uh, if I fall for someone, I would rather just be with that person uh, mm. rather than experiment. If I'm not together in, in a relationship with someone, I don't mind dating. Um, but usually, I like you know if I if I am into someone, I would rather invest all my time and energy on that one person. Yeah, okay, so you can date people who are poly, but you wouldn't sure. start, yeah. yeah you, if if have they a relationship, would, would be monogamous. Yeah, yeah. Sex or money? Both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a hard question. <laughs> yeah, both. Yeah, both. Yeah. Uh, morning coffee or morning beer? Coffee. What kind of degenerate do you think I am? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> to seduce or being seduced? Being seduced. Again. We got that Pillow one princess. out of you in the <laughs> extra content, for sure. Uh, another latex fetishist or bear skin? Bear skin. That's interesting. Yeah, um... Actually, funnily enough, most of the people that I date are not into latex. That's really yeah. Um, I mean, so sometimes I they were like they were curious about it because I mean they see this whole thing and they're like, hey, can you talk to me about it or hey, would you be into sharing this with me? And then I would be happy to. Um, but it's not like something that I expect from a partner of mine to be into latex. Mm. Hmm. If they're into it, cool. If not, that's also cool. Sex toys or hands? Hands. <laughs> I come uh, off so vanilla right now. <laughs> n- oh, come <laughs> on. <laughs> I love that you're like, I feel so vanilla. <laughs> Such a vanilla fetishist. <laughs> no, like, I love it. You're having the, you're liking the contrast. You like, like to explore, but you have found what you like. Sure. And I that's super fine. You don't have to, like, love gangbangs to be, to be sure. sex They're positive. also fine. Nothing wrong with gangbangs. Exactly. But, um, yeah. I was just going to say, a, like, something that sounded, like, explicit. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, to watch or being watched? Being watched. I'm definitely more of an exhibitionist than a voyeur. 100%. Mm. I guess it's also like something in sex parties that calls on you, you know. But how about you, Amanda? Are you more into watching or? Being That's watched? really a really good question. I, I think being watched. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I when I watch, sometimes like in parties, if watching, 
it can be very for, a for, very formal experience. Formal. Yeah. <laughs> This sounds I really need weird. More details. <laughs> I don't know which party you've been to. Okay, explain. <laughs> It can be very much like going to a, sometimes going to a museum and experiencing a movie that is like people are touching, people are putting their penis in a vagina or penis in the bottle or you know like it can be and very just there regardless. and i'm just there like whoa you know like it can, sometimes i think also that what makes i think also sometimes people can be very aware of how they are perceived when they are being watched and this is turns me off immediately yeah, so they like you feel like they perform They're like doof, doof, doof. you yeah. know very like monetized somehow like very um like monotonous or they feel like you feel like they're they have to they're holding themselves back because because they, you they know they're being watched instead of just letting go exactly they're they're like ooh i wonder how my chin is looking in this uh, angle or my yeah. yeah and sometimes it's like it can be too much of a show to it doesn't turn me on i'm like quote super dry and i'm like ooh very interesting very mm. much a psychological <laughs> game here so we're prefer, watching so for if you're watching someone and they just they don't care about being watched or not and yeah and why i don't think like, yeah, yeah and that can definitely happen at some clubs mm-hmm. but i also do even then i'm like ooh this is really hot but it's hot in um in a way where i'm still like very interesting <laughs> like Hmm, very sexy they're doing this great i'm an analyzing you know i take another role i guess then being in it you need to be really like to me at least i would not be able to do something for the show mm-hmm. i mean that's for me that sounds like a terrible experience so you'd prefer just like doing something and if someone happens to be watching then yeah then yeah because or or like at le- yeah exactly like this and being relaxed about it and just like this is what i like and this is how i fucking look when doing it you kind of you know yeah i get like that like not i don't know i think just i the whole aware feeling is very is turning me off immediately mm. in any way in any or context, form yeah, like yeah. like if i would be very aware from an outside point like how i look i would not have a good time reasonable yeah that's fine i guess all righty inside or outside <laughs> this seems very specific um i'm like hmm. can be anywhere outside <laughs> just kidding <laughs> can be inside outside <laughs> i'll go with that actually that's my answer <laughs> all right uh yeah both done to lead or follow mm, follow i have more of a sub energy to me though. i'm like i'm i switch i mean i can dom too again pillow princess like i like things being done to me rather than for other people do you have you ever or like i guess but like do you like to be in on leash uh, i have been um i like pet play as well so that comes Cat. Cat play? Pet play. Oh, pet play. I was like, cat? Well, it could be cat <laughs> yeah, play. Yeah, it could be as well. I'm very play. curious about cat play, actually. <laughs> I, I, I'm very that curious. There's a whole if big thing about any... latex uh, and cats. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a lot of people that have these kind of like cat hoods with ears and like where you can, where you close your mouth and if you just any... walk around like a cat. Yeah. If any cats are listening, write me. <laughs> Amanda at playfulman.com. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I need you in here. Sit there. <laughs> In a, in five months <laughs> from now. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Yeah, I'm curious about it because there's definitely dog puppy play is also interesting, but mm. I'm more aware of it. Like I know more, but cat play is more so like. So you feel like you would be more into cat play than dog play? Ooh, what a good question. Do I? I like that I'm asking the question. Yeah, now, I love I'm it. very curious. Actually. No, but I think it's good. Yeah, normally people don't, but I love it. Um, am I more? I think. Yeah, a ooh, the whole pet play scene is something I am not into, mm-hmm. but I'm curious about from an <laughs> again the museum standpoint. No, but yeah. I think it's very interesting. Like I, 
I do have people in my sphere who are into it and it's like to me it's obvious that it's nothing about having sex with animals but to anyone who yeah, it's, would think it's, it's something again, about it's, that it's, it's like a, a role playing it's type. a role playing exactly it's not that they necessarily like animals in that sense but whatever um, but I <laughs> this, this is to say turn. because no, just I can <laughs> also say that I respect it somehow like I do I really respect yeah. it I respect people who have like who are so curious about themselves that they have yeah. found out like ooh I want to like just like uh, I want to sit here and I want to be like woof woof and I want people to pet me and that's what and, and makes that gets amazing, me going honestly uh, yeah. like yeah from like honestly I have tried pet play it's not something I do regularly mm. Um, but I feel like I can under- totally understand why people are into this. Like yeah. if you're into puppy play, you know, there's all this like power dynamic between a dom being your owner and you being a sub and, and a pup. Um, this kind of this, again, it's, it goes into a little bit of the objectification route where you just kind of adopt this alter ego, you know, that is not bound by human sociological rules where you mm. just kind of like... You know, if each other's butt, I suppose, if you're into that, or you're like, you know, lick someone's hand and you go around on your knees. Like, yeah, I'm, there must be something inside of you that wants to do these things. Exactly. And puppy play allows you to. And cat play, I guess, it's something similar, except you X, I guess, throw yeah. down stuff from tables and, and <laughs> lick your butt. I don't know. <laughs> I think why I'm not into it is also because I don't really like people to to pet me. Like, it's, I, for me, it's like, reasonable. Ugh. And, you know, everyone loves when people are like, Touching them, like you know, like or petting them, tickling them, them in some ways with the skin and these kind of stuff. And I don't really. Understand You're not it. into that. No. Then no, you would no, be no. a great cat. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> maybe <kidding>. then I. <laughs> I think they're like no, don't, don't touch, touch me. me. Respect. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Thank you for figuring this out for me. This is a major breakthrough. I, it's a major breakthrough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now from now on. I'm a cat. <laughs> Need to find my cat well, name. Feel it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he would love it. Early morning or late night? Late night. I'm def- I'm not a morning person. Oh, it's obvious from this. That I was the last thing. 